right, so guys, here we go. Um, here's a quick video on the onboard glow igniter. So, how to do it? Very simple. First of all, you need a servo lead. Just cut it in half and keep the male part of it. There's some pre-work done over here because I've done it already, not to waste time. Strip your wires, and then here's a technique that I found. First of all, you should uh, already have tinned your relay. I didn't do it, so I'm going to do it right now. Here we go. Very easy. Just pick a little bit of solder. And there you go. Just tin it a little bit. I advise you to use a 40 watt to 60 watt soldering iron. Number two, you don't need a very hot soldering iron to do this, but um, it's good to have a relatively good one. So here's a technique that I found to solder your wires to those little pins. Just make a ring like this insert it over there and you're good to go so in this case let's do it the black wire the red wire will not go over there it's just an example there you go just a little bit of solder over there to hold the wire and then you're done there you go very nice connection, very strong, nicely done. Now you can trim these little pins if you want to, it doesn't really matter. Now take your, your turn G receiver control switch. Now, as I said, you should first try and, you know, fumble, fumble things around here to see how, how your things are gonna fit on the box, just to make a neat, nice job. I figure out mine is going to fit like this, more or less. Well, I don't need all this, all this cable over here, so I'm going to trim it down a little bit. Now, it doesn't really matter which cable of these ones you solder to the other pin. It doesn't really matter, just to close, to close the circuit, so it's not very important. It doesn't have a polarity, as you can see, two red wires. So just get a nozzle pli a nose a cutting plier, some cutting pliers, and I'll just cut a little bit of the, of the wire. There you go. Strip it. You have one of these things. Very hand, very helpful. Just strip a little bit. You don't need too much. You're gonna solder it to that pin. Now here's a way that I found out that it's easy to do this. Just put this on its side. And insert the pin. Just gonna cut it a little bit more. Stripped it too much. Sorry if that was off camera. Just cut a little bit. And insert the tip of the of the pin in there. Now if you stripped it, if you tinned it, as I did, as soon as you insert that over there. Put some solder over there. Should be a nice solid fix. So there's my solder. There it is. There you go. Just go ahead and solder it. There it is. Should be tight. Great. Should be okay. So the first part's done. Um, you got your wires soldered to the relay. Now, second part, which is going to close this circuit. It's going to be this one. So you need to solder this wire to this one. Okay? So let's cut it once again. Not to make it too long. Strip it. Don't be too much. Now you're going to tin your wires. 
very important that you do this in order to solder two wires together. Now tin it. There you go, tin this one. Okay. Now, good thing to do is we'll use a little bit of shrinking tube. Sorry, I didn't have that prepared already. Should have. Well, let's find some shrinking tube that fits over here. Well, this one fits there. It's the thickest one, so this should be good. Cut a little bit. Insert it over here. Be careful not to be very close to the heat. Otherwise, it will, it will shrink, and then you will not be able to solder it. Now, just place the two wires together like this. Okay. Pick up your soldering gun, your soldering iron. Just solder them together. There you go. Simple as that. Now, as I said, here's what happened. See the shrinking tube? Shrunk over there. Take an X-Acto knife, just open it a little bit on the part that it shrunk. I couldn't make it the other way around. I could have put it on this side and I had a lot of space. So just pull it over there, try to make it bigger. Now pick up a lighter or some heat source of some kind, just shrink it and it should be okay. So there you go. So now this part, it's done. And honestly, that's this is the trickiest part. Now just gonna thumble some things around to Fit, fit all of this in here, fumble a little bit, fit all in the box, but the wiring, it's almost done. Okay? There you go. Now, what you're going to do is, what, sorry, it's my mobile phone. Now, what you're going to do is wire a couple of cables over here. That's what's going to connect the power source for your plug. Now, I chose to use 16 gauge wire. Well, it's 1.2 volts. So you don't really need very thick wire to do this. But, well, it's my choice. I chose, remember that you should get um, wire that stands heat very well because this is going to be connected to your plug on the motor so it gets quite hot so maybe silicon silicon wire it's not the best wire to do this but uh, you can go away with it you can get away with it but it's not the best one to do it so just cut a couple of wires same length more or less now this is going to be two black wires. Why? Because this is going to be negative on both sides. It's going to be neg negative to the battery and negative to the motor. It's going directly to your motor. Just solder your wires to the outside pins. Okay? Solder into there. If you feel the need to, just turn it around or on an upward position like this. Just go ahead and solder it on the inside. It should suffice. Just make sure a good connection. There you go. Now, same thing to the other wire. Just 
strip it a little bit like this. And this is not the best tool to use on these strong and thick wires, so I'm going to use the exacto knife. Same thing. Some solder, soldering wire. I found out that it should be a little bit longer than it was on the other one. Doesn't really matter. We are far apart, so shouldn't be any problem. Now there you go. Nice connection. So this is this is all that there is to it. Simple as that. Um, so what's going to happen here is this goes to your channel, controlling channel, and this one goes to your receiver and a spare channel. Now, um, you need these two plugs. Why? Because this is going to power our system and this is going only to control it. If you don't power this end of the of the switch, it will not work. It needs power on this side and power on this side. Now why do we use a relay? Simple. Because if you use this power on this side, we would have 5 volts over here. And remember, for your plug, your glow plug, you only want 1.2 volts. Like this, a sub C cell, 1.2 volts. So now, you have a separate an independent circuit over here that's going to close or open relay with this switch in order to have a battery, a 1.2 volt battery over here. So you have 1.2 volts over here and 5 volts over here that's what's going to activate the, um, the relay. And this is all there is to it. Okay, so this is how it's done. There it is, your system. You, ah, oh, one other thing, you don't need the, the white wires to so just cut it. So there you go. Now here it would go like this. So this is a circuit, closed circuit. Okay, just figure a thing around to make a battery fit in here. Okay, here we go. Simple. Black wire over here, red wire to the motor. Okay, connector from here to here, and a connector from the positive to the motor the plug and then this goes directly to the ground of the motor okay you just close the circuit over here okay so this goes into here to the back of the battery negative positive goes directly from here to the plug and from the the ground of the motor comes a wire directly plugs into here and there's your circuit closes and opens okay simple easy to do if you have any questions just post them now put your thing in the box. Um, it's supposed to go. Now if you're going, if you want to, you can put an LED over here to show you when it's lit or not. And it's your choice. Let me show you how this works. So you have a system, a speed controller that I'm using just only has a BEC to power up the receiver. Okay. Now let's power the receiver. I have a mixing on this um, system on my channel, on my radio, I'm sorry. I have a mixing uh, on the fifth channel, so one, two, three, four, five. It's between channels three and six, so it's, um, it works with a throttle. Now, um, this is the power to the system plug, or to the system. <laughs> So there you go. Just connect everything. It should start going on and off. This is this click is the the relay going on and off because of this two these two jumpers that you need to um, configure the way you want to. Now let's pick up the, the multimeter if, if I can find it. In here it's quite big but even so here it is 
So, multimeter, let's put it on the beeping um, configuration setting. So, one cable here, another one here. There you go, it's going all berserk, berserk because the system is going on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. So, maybe this way you can see everything. So, switch the radio on, and it stops. So, this means that the plug is off. Now, with the mixing, it's just a simple mix. What you do is mix your system with the on-off throttle, or the throttle, to go in order to go on, so it heats the plug with idle, and half throttle up, it will shut down. So, I have it. Uh, I worked on a switch over here. Let me try and show you both. So this switch activates it and it's on. It's beeping, which means your plug is now lit. If you throttle up from half throttle up, it shuts down. Normally the, mo the engine is uh, quite hot, so you don't need to um, power up your plug in order for it to work. But as you throttle down, you reach half throttle, more or less, beeping again. So the, the plug is now lit. So you go to idle, and between idle and half throttle, you have a lit plug. So this is how an onboard works. So this is the automatic mode. Okay, and now I have a on, always on mode on this switch. So it doesn't matter if you're going up or down the throttle, it's always on. So, here it is, simple and works and cheap, that's what matters, right? So there you go guys, hope this helped, bye-bye. Uh,